Don't forget to check out our Facebook page as well as our Instagram page to keep up to date on all of our posts that we do. And also don't forget to hit like and subscribe and turn on bell notifications. Thanks guys. All right guys, what's up? My name is Christian and welcome back to another video. I wanted to do a cool little kind of mini series where we go through an entire mix together from beginning to end. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call this video, but I thought it'd be cool to kind of uh, dedicate a video to kind of each process or part of the process that I take when it comes to doing a mix. And uh, I thought that would be kind of valuable for people out there. Um, and so this is a live session. I have, as you can already see, I took some measures to do some basic things you didn't need to really see. Um, I got all my audio imported and uh, we have a, a vocal track, uh, a backing vocal. We have an acoustic guitar. We have a bass, a kick in, kick out, uh, an entire drum kit, hi-hat, snare, rack, tom, floor, tom, overheads, keys. And then as you can see here, we have a master that goes to a submix back to a master. So let's actually change the name of this to metering. So basically what's going on here is I have two stereo masters with a stereo aux in between. And I've labeled my stereo aux submix because the uh, master faders are pre-fader. And so if you have any plugins on your master fader and you go and mess with the volume of the master fader, let's say to tip, dip down the volume to do fade outs, it's actually gonna affect the amount of signal going into your processing on that channel strip because the master fader is pre-fader. So your aux tracks are gonna be post-fader. And so any uh, like um, compression, limiting, or EQ, uh, we're going to put it on the submix. That way we still have control overall of our master fader. This other master fader here is something I learned from Recording Revolution, uh, Graham Cochran there, and he learned it from another enge audio engineer, Home Studio Corner, I believe. His name is David Gilder or something along those lines. He's a fantastic audio engineer. This originated from him. This, as you can tell, is going into submix. This is acting as a meter to see if my mix is clipping before it gets to my post fader submix and then ultimately to my master fader. So we can eliminate any clipping coming into here or see any clipping coming into here. That's how I have my sessions always set up. Command S to save. Exactly how I have mine set up. If you're brand, brand new to Pro Tools and you don't know anything about coloring, by the way, if you just select your tracks and then come down here, you can select your coloring, and, you know. Um, so the next thing I typically do is I create groups. And so we have two vocal tracks, right? So I'm going to go ahead, Command-G, and we'll call this Vocals. That way, if I need to you know, raise the vocal mix with the background and the main vocal at all, I can do so all together. Um, acoustic guitar is fine. We're not going to be adding another acoustic bass is fine. For drums, I will then do a group for drums. right keys is fine it's by itself any effects that I add let's go ahead and just for the sake of an example command shift N we're gonna do stereo aux let's do one for reverb one for delay and um, I don't know let's have a separate reverb for the snare so let's do three Ox, right? We'll command click solo save. We'll name this uh, reverb. We'll name this, let's just do drum verb. Command right arrow. And then we'll do, I don't know, let's do delay. 
just to get some basic effects we may add more later there we go and then because as you can see here we have submix 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 right and then it eventually goes to here so let's also do the same thing so option shift and then you're going to click on the output and then go to bus submix and then you can see that it changes all the submix uh, for these let's go ahead and assign it a bus so on the input of your aux we will do let's go to um, I always take up the bottom ones but I guess it doesn't really matter bus one and two let's go ahead and rename that verb right and then on the drum verb we'll assign it bus three and four we'll rename that drum verb right and then delay we'll give it bus five six we'll rename that a delay cool so now we gave inputs to our aux tracks this is crucial because later on we're going to go to send here let's say for vocals if we want to send it to this reverb track we would actually send it to bus verb there you go just like that and then it would be a post fader track that's later on down the line right now let's just do no send I hope you guys are tracking with me so far so this is the basic setup that I take every single time with my mix this is crucial getting organized setting everything up uh, you don't have to do the color code I know some people that make audio tracks one color aux tracks a different color master fader a different color submix a different color uh, I like to color code my tracks um, that's just how I operate because easy it's easy for me to know which audio track is which I don't have to you know look for kick drum or hi-hat I can just tell that like hey this is this brass color is my drums um, I hope that makes sense cool so step one is getting organized and I've mentioned this in the past and it's pretty crucial um, so this is again a live session from a Sunday service and uh, there is, this is since it's not studio there may be human error they did not play to a click um, sometimes we have played to a click this time there was no click involved um, in fact it's funny the basses didn't even show up <laughs> there's no bass track here so we can actually get rid of that um, I may actually go into logic and do some bass with this song on a MIDI track and then incorporate it uh, that'll be kind of fun to do and I may actually incorporate some electric guitars who knows um, the world is our oyster um, and so the next thing that I kinda like to do is I kinda like to get rid of anything that doesn't really necessarily need to be there right so we can see that this acoustic guitar really starts right here which means this whole first part is piano so what I like to do is I like to command E to cut it and you can either command M to mute it or you can just full-on delete it doesn't really matter this will help tighten up your mix and get rid of any unnecessary noise you can see here that there is some bleed happening from the band that's coming in into the main singers microphone when he's not singing and then obviously this is when he is singing so what I like to do is I then cut out anything that doesn't need to be in there this will help tighten up your mix again you can either mute or you can just full-on um, get rid of it and so for these little spaces right here if you do command bracket the right bracket you can expand it and so and you can see better so like we don't need this right it's like surgical work you don't need that
I think that's pretty good. All right. And so if you do Option Control Command and then the down arrow, it'll kind of tighten everything up. And now we can see everything. Command left bracket will, you know, kind of bring everything in. So command right bracket, command left bracket. Um, all right, cool. So now we're kind of looking a little more organized, right? It's not a super huge session. So the next thing I kind of like to do is I'll go to a loud part, or at least a part where I know the entire band is in. And what I like to do is I kind of like to get a general sense of where everything should go. And so let's go ahead and do that now. Now this is just to get a general sense of the song. This obviously will change as we EQ things, as we start putting compression on things. On the drums, I always pan my drums, so kick will always be center, hi-hat will always be kind of, I always do it to the audience. So actually, let's do the hi-hat kind of here. You know, Overheads will always be left and right. Uh, floor tom, I always kind of go this direction and rack tom I always go this direction snare will be straight down the middle um, alright and then keys will be straight down the middle now I hope to add some bass in fact I'm gonna add bass to this uh, later on I will do some MIDI bass um, and then we'll add it in that's the cool thing about recording live sessions is you can manipulate them however you want in post production unless you want the true live recording so that is how I go about doing certain things. Um, again, I want to go through uh, this as a kind of um, a kind of a series, and so I think it's appropriate for us to kind of stop here for now. I hope you guys learned something in terms of the master fader and everything else. Uh, so we'll stop here for now. We will resume with uh, cleaning up, I want to clean up the drums. We'll dedicate a video to dedicating to like getting um, those transients, you know, if there's any bleed within the drum kit, let's, you know, knock it out for a tighter drum sound. So I think the next video will be centered around the drum kit. Um, but I hope this has been helpful to you. Don't forget to hit like to get that YouTube algorithm to push our content so we can get to 200 subscribers by the end of the year. Um, I've always wanted to do uh, videos where we go through an entire mix together, and I think this will be a cool little uh, stepping off. It might answer some questions that you might have in terms of why is my mix low when I bounce it out and listen to it in my car, and we'll go over all of those things. So with that being said, I will see you guys in the next session.